Hi, I'm Tom Casper, editor of American Woodworker Magazine. Today I want to talk to you about uh, threading holes in wood for machine screws using really simple tools. Here's a few examples of what I wanted to show you how to do. These are all different types of machine screws. A regular flathead one. Of course, these are all cut away <laughs> so you can see the threads in the wood. Here's a leveling foot, a socket headed screw, and this screw has a knurled head on it for uh, turning by hand. There are all kinds of applications for machine screws in wood. Anytime that you need a really strong joint, one that just can't possibly break or come apart, or a joint that you want to easily take apart, put back together, take apart, put back together, on and on and on like that, over and over, without wearing the screw threads out, machine screws are a great choice. Building jigs, for instance, boy, can you make a great jig using machine screws instead of wood screws. Here's another application. This is just a mock-up, but here is a plate for a tail vise and a workbench. And while this piece of wood isn't part of the bench, obviously, I, what I want to show you is how a really large screw like this, a 5 16 18, extremely strong, can easily be threaded into this piece of wood using just a few simple tools. But if you anchor this plate, this tail vise plate, to this piece of white oak using screws like this, you can see how easily it turns into the hole. It doesn't take any force at all, but just to make it even easier, I'm just going to drill it all the way in there. In we go. Quite simple. And when that's all the way down, this thing is held on extremely strong, stronger than any kind of wood screw would ever be. So, to begin, let me show you the tools that we need to use. We'll drill a hole and we'll tap it. And you'll be surprised, amazed, as I was probably, at how easy tapping really is. But what we'll need for that is a special drill. It's not that the configuration is different, it's just the diameter is very particular to the size of the screw that the hole will go into and a special long nose tap. So let's go from here over to the drill press and make a hole. Okay, we just drilled a hole in this piece of white oak using an F size drill. The size of the drill used for these holes is very particular and every different tap requires a different size drill not in the normal fractional series usually, but something else. Again, this is an F, a letter F drill. With the hole drilled, nice and plumb, we can drill the, tap the hole by hand using a cordless drill. This is not like tapping metal at all. This is quite a lot easier. Let me show you how it works. The tap itself has a really long snout and it will guide itself through the hole quite readily. I have the drill set on uh, number one, slow speed, the most torque, because you are going to need some too. So here we go. All the way through. Now, you can kind of ruin the threads by accident by putting the drill in reverse and pulling the tap out the way it went in. So instead, the easier thing to do is to release the tap from the drill chuck, leave it in the hole, and just pull it all the way through the other side. No big deal. Now we're ready to just try the hole. I'm going to put the bolt into it, like so. Chuck a driver into the, my drill again. Just to make this easier. And away we go. Okay. This is almost as solid as a, wood, a metal joint. It's good luck trying to get that thing out of there. <laughs> it's really stuck in there hard. On the other hand, 
for disassembling something, it couldn't be easier. All you got to do is back it right out. There you go. Simple as that.